Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> I would like to thank, to thank Superintendent Hendry Bott and the Brookline Education Foundation for this tremendous honor. I would also like to express my gratitude to our principal, Warren Blair, for, as you would say, getting the ball rolling on the nomination, but more importantly, for finding me worthy of this honor and for bringing together all of the Lawrence School <laughs> to celebrate teachers. For their unwavering support, I would like to thank our early childhood principal, Vicki Milstein, and my wonderful <laughs> kindergarten colleagues, the K Squad. <laughs> Being a teacher is a team effort. I cannot do what I do without the support and understanding of so many. The administrators, my Lawrence colleagues, the staff, families, and the students on board with me on this exhilarating ride that teaching kindergarten really is. I would like to thank my amazing family for their unconditional love, incredible patience, and sustained understanding. I would like to thank my mother, Maud Pierre, and my sisters, Josie Gagnon, for letting me choose my own path in life and for always believing in me. And to the Miller side of the family, thank you. Thank you for always being there for me and being my cheering squad. Jean-Claude, Sophie, Emily, you allow me to live my dream and I'm grateful for that every single day. For those of you who do not know me yet, I am Dominique Pierre Ferdinand. I am a woman. I am kind. I am fair. I am respectful. I am hardworking. I am a daughter, a mother, and a wife. I am a mother of two. I am a teacher of so many and a friend to all. Thank you all, dear friends, for being here today. I am originally from Haiti, a Caribbean island. Haiti is my home island of sunshine, warm beaches, succulent mangoes where people are friendly and caring. On this island, also known as one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere, I got most of my values. I've learned that giving is part of life and I try to live a, full, a life full of generosity. I have learned that giving does not always have to be material, materialistic. Back home, we are always expected to share, even when what we have isn't enough to begin with. If we are eating and someone comes over to the house and there's no food left over, we will give the food off our plates without even batting an eyelash. But when I'm talking about giving, I'm not talking simply about things. I'm referring to the face-to-face -face interactions, a smile, a hello, sac passé, which means, what's up? Then we listen attentively to the speakers as they tell us about her day, bad back, best deals at the market. When it was time for me to attend college in the early 90s, all the universities in Haiti were closed due to political turmoil. The nuns at my parochial school decided to write Boston University and requested acceptance and a scholarship on my behalf. Imagine my surprise and my mom's when I was accepted. One of the first most striking and perplexing things that got my attention when I arrived in Boston was the way people greeted each other. I can't tell you how many times people say to me, hi, how are ya? <laughs> but they would never stay long enough for me to re respond. <laughs> I was often left talking to elevator doors closing <laughs> or a backpack bouncing around, away from me. Sometimes I wondered if they even, were they even talking to me? It took a long time before I realized that hi, how are ya? was just a nod of acknowledgement, not time to pause and check in. Because in fact, there is so little time. As the years went on, I continued to make 
time for a true Haitian like greeting. Talking and checking in with students and families and colleagues, you know. <laughs> Growing up, my mother and teachers instilled the Haitian pride in me. In my mind, the, dark, the darker we looked, the more beautiful we were, and the closer we were to our African ancestors. I was also taught that it was the person you are inside that really mattered. In high school, I was immersed in the National Negritude Movement, rich in literature, poetry, music, and philosophy, written both in Creole and French, feeling those of us lucky enough to attend school with love and pride for our languages, our culture, and our country. When I got to be though, I tried to fit in and find people who were like me. First, I tried the Caribbean Club. The problem was, out of the 12 members, nine were from Jamaica and three from Barbados. So everyone spoke English, but it was not the kind that I understood. Next, I tried the African American Club. Here I found that although we all had brown skin, our experiences and perspectives were very different. Lastly, I tried the International Club, where 99% of the members were Asian. <laughs> I felt alienated, rejected, and lonely. But I knew even then that my future classroom would be a place where everyone felt welcome, no matter whom they were, where they came from, and what they looked like. In the end, the person I found to say hello sac passe to, who, came, who became my close friend in college, was Akiko Kawai. She is kind, friendly, she spoke English slowly and clearly. <laughs> she wanted to become a teacher, just like I did. And she loved Bon Jovi. <laughs> Today we teach together at Lawrence and are still huge Bon Jovi fans. My history has shown us that nothing worth fighting for is accomplished by one person. Haiti was the first colonel, colonel colonized Caribbean island to have fourth and gain its independence from France. It is written on the emblem of the flag for, genera for generations to remember. L'union fait la force. It means united we are strong. In Haiti, on one landowner's field, all the neighbors get together to turn the land, plant the crops and harvest. This practice would carry over to the next neighbor and the next until all the land was cultivated. A drummer kept the beat while the neighbors hoped. Food was cooked next to the field for all to share. After the harvest, if my family planted corn and another planted coffee, we would exchange and share. I have internalized the spirit of teamwork both in my personal life and in my classroom. Collaborating with my colleagues bring energy and achievement that I couldn't have created alone. From piggy and elephant projects to creating structures out of straws, my case squad and I rely on each other. As a school community organizing secret pals, Halloween parades, participating in the PTO plays, have helped bring all of us close together Taking parts in BEF grants and workshops have given me the chance to learn with new colleagues across town, Lincoln, <laughs> and think more deeply about my teaching. Learning taiko drumming with nine other colleagues, thanks to the generosity of the BEF, helped me gain a fresh perspective on learning a completely new skill while making a powerful drum beat that brought me home. It's the Lawrence Haiti connection. <laughs> Having grown up in a dictatorship, I will never take for granted the right and privilege of being able to vote. When I learned, that the, when I learned about the history of voting in this country for women and African-American, it became even more important for me to vote 
and to encourage others to do so as well. This is why in KF we vote often and about many things. <laughs> Should the dramatic play area be a pet shop, a construction site, or a castle? Put a tally next to your choice. Raise your hand to choose one of these three books to read today. For years, KF sponsored a school-wide cookie election where all students voted for their favorite cookie. Students K-8 lined up at the cardboard box poles to vote for their chocolate chip, oatmeal raisin, or M&M. The KF students counted the ballot reluctantly, throwing out any ballots with two or more checks. <laughs> the winning cookie was announced quite a few days later. You know, Five-year-olds count slowly. <laughs> KF parents baked many batches of their favorite cookies for the whole school to enjoy. Somehow the cookie election reminded me of the fields right before the harvest time back home. With growing excitement, a community and village comes to come together with everyone taking their role and working hard for a common purpose. Everybody was involved and everybody enjoyed the tasty fruits. You know that old saying, it takes a village? Well, I was raised where the village really did raise the children. Everyone took care of everyone. This meant when I was walking down the street and did not greet Auntie Marie, she would reprimand me for forgetting my manners. But if my mom weren't feeling well, there would be at least three different leaf remedies left at the door before we even called the doctor. Although 90% 90, 90 of the population could not read or write, our nights were full of history and folklore. Every night after dinner, we would gather in the backyard, sit under our trees, and listen to the elders tell stories in Creole from a long time ago. Stories not found in storybooks. When the French soldiers attacked with their cannons, we, the, slaved, the slaves, armed with rocks and sticks, and a firm belief in our voodoo kept rising. Then there were also the folk tales that often included songs that started with a call and response, creak, crack. We listened, we sang, we learned, and I was transported. This is my favorite childhood memory. Circle time in kindergarten is not that different from storytelling back in Haiti. The children gather around, we learn beyond the books. We learn about different cultures and about who we are what we are expert at, and what we need to work on. We learn to cheer each other. We, need, we learn to work together because we are part of that same village. Every voice counts. Every voice must be heard, however soft it is. We take the time to connect and know each other the hello sakpase way. We do not need to learn to read and write in kindergarten to have powerful ideas and wonderful stories to share. I am just simply humbled to receive this Cavalier Award. I am surrounded by incredibly talented and dedicated teachers. I am constantly, constantly inspired and motivated by the wonderful work that you do every single day. But I would not be here today without learning the hard lessons in my practicum with Mary McConnell at the Driscoll School. Where are you? It was a room full of wonder where you could learn through your mistakes and continue to blossom even when all the earthworms died over the weekend and stuck up the whole room. I knew then that I would teach kindergarten and start making a difference from the very beginning of the big school. I would not be standing here today if in the first year at Lawrence, I did not have the guidance of my mentor, Neo Rosenberg. Right here. She is the quintessential kindergarten teacher who made music pour out of my heart. Together, we had a fantastic journey through the years, teaching and making our kindergarten a wonderful haven 
for young children from all over the world. After 19 years, I can say that my work here is not done. <laughs> I will continue to strive to be the best that I can be at helping young children grow. I feel that early childhood is changing so much and the demands on these little kindergarten hands are becoming too much for them to bear. However, I am and will always be an early childhood gladiator who advocates for what young children really need. I will continue to meet children where they are and give them the, so the social and academic tools to be successful individuals who are proud of who they are and proud of their work. Guided by the golden rule to treat others the way you want to be treated, some creativity and humor, I can affirm that Kindergarten Ferdinand will always be a joyful place to learn. So, of all you learned today, remember this the best. Don't hurt each other and clean up your mess. <laughs> Take a nap every day, wash before you eat, hold hands, stick together, look before you cross the street. And remember the seed in the little paper cup. First the root goes down and the, and the plant grows up. Thank you.